Hello there! Today we are going to install MULEC to an S912 board, which could be a Pandora Key 7, could be a treasure, it could be one of these new treasure 2s. What's important is you have one of these little buttons on the board. We'll need a male to male USB cable, we'll need a USB hub, this one has an Ethernet network card, USB 2. Also need a micro SD with a USB reader, writer, something like this. That's all we need. Maybe. Okay, so let's stick it into the computer. Ugh. Go to the video in the description. Do the fake flash test. Fla flash. Flash test on it. Follow that guide until around one minute twenty. Once you're done, we go to the Emuelec website. In the GitHub, scroll down until you can see the amlogic.arm 3.9 generic img.guz. Save link as somewhere on your computer and then load up Etcher. Select the image. Make sure you selected the correct destination. I'm using a 32 gigabyte card. Then just press flash. Once finished, unplug your micro SD and then reinsert it. We're gonna now go into the Emuelic partition. And then we're gonna go to device trees, scroll down until you see the G, what is it, G, um, yeah, GXMQ2011G, right click that, copy, go back to the root, right click, then paste, click once, and then twice, slowly, and you can rename this file, and at the bottom here, you need to rename that to DTB, Dot IMG. The other partition on your micro SD is called storage. This partition is a Linux partition, which means in Windows you can't easily fiddle with the files. So right click, eject, and take out your micro SD. Okay, plug in your USB hub to the top port of your Pandora, and then connect the USB mail to mail from the USB hub to the bottom port of your Pandora box. And we can plug in the Ethernet cable and then pop in the micro SD. Now hold that little switch, turn on the power. Keep it held until you see the MULX screen. When it's done, you can let go. So far, so good, but we're not done yet. Now go into network settings. If you got it plugged into Ethernet, you should have an IP address here. If you have a Wi-Fi dongle in there that's supported, you gotta press that little enable Wi-Fi, type in your details, and then restart. Once you're connected to the network, on the Windows PC, backslash backslash emu emulek, or you can type in the IP address you just saw. And this is the box here. Download the key 7 MULEC configs. I've made some configurations for the controls and settings to get it booted up properly. We need to extract them onto the box, like so. We'll do the same in config files. Extract them to the folder called config files on the box. Replace, and we're good. Okay, so on the box, we need to look at the folder called ROMs. This is where our games belong. So we're gonna copy over some FB Neo games. If the ROMs are already scraped for Emulation Nation or RetroPie, you should be able to copy them over too.
So you have one folder per machine. For example, you got uh, ColecoVision, Daphne, Famicom. So just copy the game files for each one. Also, the BIOS folder is here too. Just copy everything over that you need. Let's go back onto the box. And we can restart system. If successful, we'll be able to see a few games on here. But it ain't pretty. Here we can change per system. Underneath that is per game. So if you need a particular emulator to run this game, you can change it. Let's just try 1942. Runs great, two players. Mm. Push coin and start twice to exit. In the zip file you copied over earlier, I've actually set some of the options, so... FB Neo is at 200% core, so no slowdown on Metal Slug 2. In the main menu, go down to Scrape, we can use Screen Scraper here, or we can use the game's database. I recommend Screen Scraper if you have your username and password. But I forgot mine, so... Let's see what happens. Let's check some more MULX settings. So here we can uh, fiddle with some things. SSH needs to be on if you want to use network. I recommend bezels off. Here we have the global settings. If you want to add another controller, you can use this menu here. You can also change the theme set in the UI settings, if you have it downloaded. Theme configuration. You can play with these options here. Grid size, things like that. Uh, updates and downloads, this is where we can download more themes. Try grid. Boxes. Carousel. And crystals downloaded, so we can check now UI settings. We can flip it over. See what that looks like. Right, let's try some games. First one, Alien. Zzz. Okay, 1942. To get to options, press select or the hotkey and press button two, which is triangle. And you can get to these game options in RetroArch. I'm gonna try vertical mode. If you like Tate, you can spin the monitor around and look really nice. If you run into an error, you'll end up with a messed up screen like this. So I'd hit start, up, circle, circle. Usually the blue screen will tell you where the problem lies. Okay, let's try some Amiga. First, system options, change the emulator to Pue, not cracker. Yeah. If you need a virtual keyboard, press the select button. F2, two players. You can also put Scum VM on this. But you need to hook up a mouse. PC Engine. Famicom. Bit of SNES. N64, controls don't work. So go back into the quick menu, go down to controls, port one controls. And then with the up, down, left, right cursors, we need to change them to the analog stick. 
So on the right we need to change from D-pad up to Control stick Y Y Minus So it goes Y minus Y plus X minus X plus Go back and then above that press save game remap file I'll save your controls for Smash Brothers Save core remap file saves the controls for every game on this emulator It's too bad Smash Brothers runs really poorly Mario 64 on the other hand runs pretty good One thing you couldn't do on the key 7 is save which we can do here in the quick menu Save state Check out the menu again and go to quick load. Oh yeah. Is the port of doom? Open BR doesn't run, but Atomis Wave does. It does have its limitations though. Remember this boss? Mega Drive? Thirty two X. Sega CD. Bit of snatcher. Capcom versus SNK two. Alright, I'm going to explain how to change the controls here. Same again, quick menu, controls. Put on controls. Okay, so what we do is imagine this is a Super Nintendo pad or a PlayStation pad. So that's X, and now this is uh, square. And now this is circle. And this is triangle. So on a triangle's medium punch. And then L and R, this is L first. So on strong punch. And then strong kick for R. We do that for port one and port two. When we're done, save game remap as we did before. Now every time we play this game, the controls will be fixed. I've actually added the Capcom vs SNK2 control configuration to the zip file, so maybe you already saw it to you guys. Tekken 3, PlayStation. No controller remaps needed. It's all good. Last minute edition. Mayflash Dolphin Bar. Wii Remote. And a Wii Remote holder for a zapper gun. We need to use the MAME 078 ROMs with MAME 2003 Plus emulator. And then it works. I couldn't believe it. So if you go to the settings, go to the very back and the port one controls, then add the buttons you need. Won't be as good as a gun com, but who cares? Zapper on a Pandora. Big thanks to Tatito Mate who made this tutorial, which is online. It's for Key 7 and Treasure 3D and clones. It's a great resource if you have one of these systems. Also links to the Pandora Box Arcade Facebook group, the Discord channel and the Emu Elec Discord channel too. And a thank you to our patrons. Martin Palmer, Wilbert Rivera, Ran Polrath, Kevin Sanchez, Francesco, Lee Dragon, na -na -na -nine, Jose Lobos Palenzuela, Cahill Reilly, Chris Hannett, Lazy Waves, JVM, Jim McConaughey, Patrick Champion, Joel Matthews, Amish McLaren, Matthew Drover, Jorge Cosio Viorel, Unknown951, and Jay Carter. Thank you all. See you around, guys. Bye!